Hi, it's Rich C here from Sarissa Precision and today's part two video is taking a look at some spray colours and a few finishing details on that Roman temple. Let's go! So we've got our temple on our tray and we've got our can of stone paint. I'm going to use this as a base coat to create a bit of texture. And then we're going to cover over the top of it with some other colours. See you outside. Here's our stone coat. Let's get spraying. Right. Okay, we'll let that dry and we'll come back to it tomorrow. And we've got everything nice and dry, nice and textured. And we can see all the detail that was there originally. Just painting straight onto MDF is no problem at all. What we're going to do next with this is build up a couple of different layers of colour. I'm going to start by spraying from underneath with just a, a basic spray, Halfords Grey Primer. That'll get me a, a nice undercoat, see if you like, base colour. And then straight on top of that I've got a bit of concrete effect which I had left over from doing a recent Judge Dread range. After that I'm going to go from the top with a marble effect. Well, it's not really a marble effect. This one's just a marble colour. And we're back with a slightly grayed version of the temple. As you can see, I've done a couple of the sprays that we said. I sprayed it from underneath with the darker grey. And then having gone round, I turned it on its side. Did a few, made sure it was grayed all through there and then up on top when we're from the top I was spraying with the concrete effect and with the lighter marble effect. Now what we're going to do is add a bit of wash. So something like a strong tone is going to start giving us lots of deep shadows. So I've just added here is a little bit of dishwasher liquid and that should help as a medium to allow it to flow better. So can we see the difference between this section and this section with the dishwashing liquid added? It just flows on just a little bit better. Don't need much. I'll just spread that around. Now that I've gone round from upside down, adding in the shadows underneath. I'm just making sure that any large areas of watered ink there get spread around a bit just to dry out a bit more evenly. But once I've done that and that dries, I'll flip it over and we'll just put a little bit of shading just in the bottom edges around these pillars. Right, I'm gonna just add a bit around the bottom. then getting a bit of water on a brush just spread it around a bit again if I found any areas that I'm not happy with I'll just water down the area and just spread it around a bit more and I'm just making sure that there's no patches totally full of ink if I'm not sure I just dry my brush run it along and soak up any excess paints or add some water and thin it out a bit more. I'll let that dry and then we'll do the top of the ring. Okay so as you can see the lower half there mostly drying off nicely and what we can do now is use a pencil just a 2B this one just to draw in some lines and I'm going to use these Nice notches, just to create those for me. 
and just go opposite to opposite. <clears throat> and obviously these would represent the joins. Okay, now with that done, I'm just going to use the same ink again. I'm going to really water it down this time. And I'm just going to follow the line. And just use it to help me get a bit of effective shadow in there. Okay, all right, we'll let that dry and then we'll move on to the next part. Now, with the wash done, we can get an old brush and bring some highlight colours together, just some grey and white here. And if we just swap our palette around a bit, we're just going to pop a bit of grey on and a bit of white on. Now, any colours will do. These ones are airbrush colours, so they're quite watered down already. Uh, I'm not going to touch water with this. I'm just going to grab a bit of grey, bring a bit of white into it, until I'm happy with the shade of colour that I'm after. And then I'm just going to brush it out here on the tissue. And then... brush it out on the actual edges uh, or in this case on the top we could go center here we just keep working our way around letting the brush pick out all those rough textures that we put on earlier and we're also going to blend in some of these watermarks There's no uniformity to stone, so we want to create all sorts of patterns as we do this, really aiming to pick out all those top edges. So, as you can see, I've been dry brushing using a bit of grey and a bit of white, quite a lot more white. And that dry brushing is just simply removing that excess moisture from the brush. What I've been doing just to help highlight each of these tiles, just work the centre of them, leaving the shadow around the outside of them. That's where a slightly squared off brush helps. Um, and also on the top edges here, I've just been doing at the centre, working that centre point. Okay, and just dab off any excess moisture Blending in the shadows, bringing the top edges up nice and bright, and almost dabbing. I'm almost dabbing at the brush, and as I'm dabbing, I'm kind of brushing it away at the same time, allowing the crystals to pick up on those top edges and that rough texture that we put on earlier. And I can always go around the edge the last time. And then do the bottom edge of all these pillars. Do the same down the bottom edge. Okay, and we've worked away all the way around doing that. And you can keep doing this as much as you like, bringing the colours up brighter and brighter. Um, depends how much realism or fantasy element you want to create. Uh, the look of Jason and the Argonauts fighting over this in uh, Mortal Gods. Uh, or maybe Gangs of Rome, or maybe we fast forward to the future where this is a a ring in a temple that's been discovered on the gates of Antares. Who knows where we'll see these. Or yours. Okay, now we've kind of done enough for the painting, I reckon. We could always touch up with a pure white on the top bits and edges here and there. We're going to move on to a little bit of decoration. And what I mean by decoration 
is something along these lines. Now we, it often comes in a mat like this, a sheet, and all we're going to do is grab some scissors and slice it into strips. And they don't have to be regular. Let me just do a few strips. Just put that to one side. Now already, you can see where I'm going with this. We're gonna use these to climb and wend their way around. Okay, now, how are we gonna fix that? Well, quite simply, we're going to use this contact adhesive and we're going to use a clip just to hold a length and I'm gonna spray it and then drape the sprayed sticky piece where I want it. Just like that. And we're gonna keep working our way around, taking bits, and we could do uh, clumpy bits as well as longer bits. Just pop those on. Sticking them into place. And they're suitably ragtag, but what I could do is just tease bits off and break bits away and make them look a bit more rough and ready and of course all these bits I'm popping off as I pull them off from various places I can re-glue those just using normal PVA glue if I wanted to but what I've also got left over from doing some of my 3D bases is some of these little colourful tufts so what I'm going to do is just here and there pop those in as though they're weeds growing up few more they come with their own little tacky base which is great um, we'll utilize that just to glue them in there and create that little bit of extra color uh, and I could just keep going on like this and just adding a bit more here a bit more there until I'm happier with the final result but I think you get the gist Thank you. That'll do us for another build. I'll let you go and practice your own ones and we'll see you here for the next one.